So here's VO working in a root two rectangle. And so um, I'll kind of fly through the construction of it. But one of the things that's fun with this Vion painting is it's divided into three color areas. And the way Vion designed it is rather clever because from the lower left-hand corner, he swung an arc to produce essentially a square from the left-hand edge. And you can see that's where the divide between the blue and the yellow field happens. And then he'll do the same thing from the other side and that determines the divide from the right-hand side. Uh, in design speak, we call this the rebated square within the rectangular field. So uh, this is something you don't see artists doing often in such a bold way. So it's kind of amusing here. But what all artists would do if they're working with this kind of harmonic geometry is they would start with the overall rectangle. In this case, having a proportion in, in the, um, the ratio of the square root of two, you would start with the long diagonal of the, of the rectangle and you would meet that with a crossing line from the opposite uh, corner, meeting that a, a diagonal at 90 degrees. So that's the, the starting point. And so if you were to do that from all four corners, you're going to have from each corner a diagonal line and also a crossing line through the other diagonal. And that's what you see here. So this represents a diagram that we call the armature of a rectangle. And so here, it, again, it's from each corner, you see the diagonal and you also see a crossing line that would make a 90 degree intersection. And what we see here is the beginning of how Vion would compose his image. So the first thing is there are all these diagonals happening and you'll notice they're the exact angle of that crossing line direction. So he's using that as a, um, a major design theme, that one angle. And then at the same time, he's saying, if you look at these two intersections, I can then run a horizontal line through it. And as a result, I'm defining the tops and the bottom line of, of this uh, group of structures for the buildings. So he's using this in a very straightforward and simple way, um, more easily than most artists would do. Um, and then from there, he's getting all of his design systems or, or, or um, all of his design ideas being composed through subdividing into finer and finer detail. So here we have a work by Myron. And this works seabird, it's, it's by the ocean, clearly. Um, and he'll start the same way with this armature, which again was the two diagonals. And then from each corner, a crossing line at right angles to the diagonal. And as soon as he creates that, he's really built all of the defining structure that this painting would need. And so now from there, he's just breaking it down finer and finer, but it's all coming from that structural starting point. Why would artists do all this? The idea is if you think what you're building is as important as what an architect might do in a building, then spaces matter and the shapes that you build within your structure matter. And so what's happening is these structures allow for an internal kind of harmony to be established. And so within all of this is a harmonic response to all of the decisions. So it's not to simply draw a diagram and drop things on. It's to highlight, refine, to improve an already good composition and make it even uh, more elegant, more poetic. So it's a kind of geometric poetry that this can lead toward. You take the grid away and it looks as though it's still right in front of your eyes. So in this case, I love showing this work because it's as clear a how-to as I've discovered in, in anyone's work. Uh, so it certainly looks like the work of someone who would bring what he's doing in art to a teaching mode. One could teach from this painting. And the fascinating thing is Myron never taught from his own works. He would only show masterworks and, and essentially who were his idols. But for me, I'm finding it very useful to teach from his paintings. 